Hello, my name is Logan and I'm your host, The Mighty Pirate. In today's episode, we'll be talking about battle mechs, how they're built, why they're used, and how they came to be. Battle mechs had peaceful, humble beginnings initially. The credit for the technology is given to Professor Gregory Atlas. He was the principal investigator tasked with refining Moirmer bundles by the Terran Alliance. For his efforts, Professor Atlas received the Nobel Prize. His Moimer technology was quickly adapted into the production of industrial mechs. Industrial mechs, or work mechs, are mechs that were used for industrial purposes, greatly improving the possibilities for construction and engineering. As with most technologies, it was also adapted into a tool of war. Though this was not Gregory Atlas's intention, the Terran Alliance almost immediately began to work on producing the first prototype battle mech, and their efforts produced the Mackey, an endeavor which took 20 different Terran production firms almost 90 years to adapt. In the present, there are hundreds of battle mech designs, each with dozens of sensor, armor, and weapons layouts, but all battle mechs have two features that define them. First, it's the movement that is unmatched by other ground vehicles of equivalent size and firepower, and second, they are powered by a fusion reactor with a matching cooling system to reduce the internal heat levels generated by their power and weapon systems. So there are thousands of different components that make up a battle mech, but they can be grouped into four primary systems, chassis, movement, combat armaments, and power systems. At the core of every battle mech is the skeletal structure, the chassis. The chassis is what the rest of the battle mech is built around or inside. Similar to the human skeleton, a unit's chassis has a major influence on the shape, structure, and form a unit will take. Every battle mech's chassis consists of several dozen bones. Each of these bones is a honeycombed, foamed aluminum core wrapped with stressed silicon carbide monofilament protected by a rigid titanium shell. Each of these artificial bones has attachment points for their moimer muscles, and servos that drive the battle mech. This skeletal construction helps makes the battle mech less vulnerable and easier to repair than vehicles supported by stress skin shells. Atop the chassis is the parts and small electrically driven articulators that move the mech's light weapons and sensor arrays. Bundle fibers called moimers control a mech's limbs and main weapons. Moimer is an artificial analog of biological muscles with a greater strength to weight ratio. They're engaged with electrical current, and its strength depends on the amount of fibers active, not the current provided. Moirmer requires large amounts of electrical voltage to function, with larger muscles obviously requiring more energy than the smaller. However, they have a high electrical resistance, causing large amounts of waste heat, which needs to be dispersed or the fibers will fry themselves. This does, however, grant an advantage, as Moirmer cannot be stunned by electrical discharges, even more so as metal armor and skeletons have low electrical resistance, channeling and discharging any strong electrical hits into the ground. If a battle mech's moimers are damaged in battle, technicians can replace the fiber bundles with new ones or transplant the moimers from other parts of the mech's skeletons. Transplanted moimer bundles cannot restore full function to a damaged limb, but they do provide limited mobility and strength, allowing for field repairs over longer engagements. To power these titanic weapons, battle mechs require a large constant power supply for movement in combat. The fusion reactor, which produces enormous amounts of electricity from ordinary water, is the most efficient system for providing this power. Because the fusion reaction created by the Battlemex power plant doesn't release neutrons, the power plant can operate indefinitely without becoming radioactive. The fusion power plant produces the electricity by a process known as magnetic hydrodynamics. In this process, magnetic fields are used to channel plasma from the fusion reaction into a loop. This plasma is electrically conductive, and so the loop functions as a powerful generating coil, producing both electricity and waste heat. Every battle mech carries radiators called heat sinks to help dissipate this heat. Heat sinks are especially important because excessive high internal temperatures can disrupt the magnetic containment fields around a battle mech's reactor. If a power plant's magnetic jar is disrupted, an uncontrollable fusion reaction may occur, releasing neutrons and exposing the battle mech's internal systems and its mech warrior to lethal radiation. Modern battle mech and vehicle armor was originally introduced in 2470 by Terran scientists. In the Battletech universe, armor is albative in nature. This means it's generally destroyed or blown off when hit, but in the process of doing so, it absorbs enormous energies, protecting the unit it is mounted on. While powerful blows will still rock a vehicle, there will be little if any internal damage as long as the armor plating still remains. Armor piercing rounds do exist for certain weapons, but they require a higher technology level and cost more. As a result, destroying a mech requires either immense firepower concentrated on a vulnerable location, or a lucky hit. Standard battle mech armor is composed of several layers, providing various degrees of protection and support. The first layer is an extremely strong titanium alloyed with steel. The 
the result of crystal alignment and radiation treatment, which is also very brittle. The second layer is ceramic cubic borne nitrate, which combined with a web of artificial diamond fibers acts as a backstop to the steel layer. The second layer of armor also prevents any armor fragments from damaging the battle mech's internal system. These two layers rest atop a titanium alloy honeycomb structure, which provides support and a layer of self-sealing polymer, which allows for space and underwater operations. These two separate layers of armor provide battle mechs with effective protection against energy and projectile weapons. Battle mechs can attain walking and running speeds, ranging from 40 to 100 kilometers per hour in open terrain. Dense forests, swamps, steep slopes will slow down a mech, but very few terrain features can stop one. In addition, many mechs can jump over obstacles by superheating air with their fusion reactors and releasing it through so-called jump jets. All battle mechs can also move underwater when crossing rivers or small lakes. Space more battle mechs can make assault landings from low orbit. Special reaction jets are housed in their feet to allow for them for a soft land from altitudes of up 320 kilometers. Because energy weapons can be powered indefinitely by a mech's onboard fusion reactor and don't require ammunition reloads, battle mechs usually carry charged particle beam weapons or lasers as their primary armaments. In addition, many battle mechs carrying launching racks for short or long range non nuclear missiles. Still, other mechs mount rapid-fire autocannons or machine guns to use against infantry, aircraft, or other battle mechs. In another video, I'll go in-depth about armaments, but the list is simply too long for this video. Thanks for watching, and check in the near future as I'll be releasing more videos on the Battletech universe.